Inshallah, the sisters who are in the Zoom uh, call uh, or anyone else who's in the Zoom call, they can share their experience and Inshallah, we will read it out uh, as well. So they can submit that as a Q&A or in the comment section. And Inshallah, we will uh, pick that up. Any brothers ready to share? Just raise your hand, inshallah, and they will come to you. During the experience um, on the point uh, of the forehead, um, uh, when I got to that point, I fell asleep. And um, after that, I don't remember anything. But before that, I uh, remember doing all the other points. I mentioned in detail from the beginning what you were. Remember, remember that what we are asking, firstly a person should understand that question, we are asking what you have experienced. Now some people, they start mentioning what they have not experienced. That is never the question, because whatever you have not, that's not meaning that there is no use mentioning. What is the beneficial aspect is when you are asked your name, you tell in the name, you don't tell address. So when you are asked, for example, uh, the, the, what you are, so you focus on from the beginning to the end in those parts, those moments of experience, because actually uh, that is really where the person can be guided or uh, a person can know. So what they have not got, they have not got, but what they have, that need to be focused uh, on as well. And uh, did you? yes. So from the, from the, for example, you should begin like this. For example, after the askar and the protection, we began the purification process of the lataif and then whatever I saw the name of Allah and my red latifa, this and this, this, these things, what you should mention from there. Because you mentioned up to that point, actually, then after you fall asleep, so that's meaning that you, when you fall asleep, obviously you can't remember. But what happened before, from the beginning to that point, that you can share, inshallah. Uh, when we started, uh, uh, I was thinking Allah is with me, uh, Allah is hearing me. And um, while we were doing it, uh, when we came across um, the stomach region, I, um, I, I kind of taught um, some stuff. But, um, I don't know if it was like my imagination or like maybe it was like I seen something. Please mention, as I mentioned, that you don't need to mention what you don't know. When you don't know what was it, you just uh, describe and then we tell you that what it was your imagination, whatever actually. So whatever you are not asked, whatever you don't know, you don't need to mention and put unnecessary burden upon your mind. Just mention whatever you can. Which are, yeah. um, I did, I I didn't really, I didn't see anything, but uh, I felt something like, uh, it's hard to describe, I'm not, I'm not really sure of a way to describe it. Right. What happened during the red purification of the red Latifa or the orange Latifa? Um, 
nothing akhaf from my finger on on so at that time you were completely blank you were not able to visualize the name of allah you know, or think about the name of allah in red color or white color um i was look my eyes were closed and when i was looking i could see allah's name while my eyes were closed and i imagined in a red color but i could see allah's name and i i i could see like some light coming coming down and that's very where was the light going when it coming down it was coming um, uh, down through uh, my, the middle area of the body right right and then after the other latai for the other color uh, what what happened during that time um because the color of the name was changing meaning we were instructed to imagine different color yeah. process what was happening when uh, when i uh, when we got to the um, throat region uh, i could see um, i could see allah's name again um, okay that's fine so after the uh, purple uh, latifa purifica you uh, fell asleep huh? yeah okay i remember the he, i remember him saying um, imagine the purple one and then after that i right. i could hear him anymore right okay okay that's fine so this means that actually your process of purification went well only thing is that a person have to stay conscious and not fall asleep because remember what you are experiencing is it's a spiritual experience your memory and consciously can only remember when it's wake when you are wake and conscious otherwise things will happen like sometimes people see dreams and they know they've seen a dream but well, they get up and they don't know anything or they just say oh we see vaguely so uh, inshallah the, so that is fine so uh, next what you need to do is when they practice next or individually you practice you have to force little bit yourself to stay conscious as well because that is the point where a person completely you may say is spiritual uh, eye or the inner vision starts to open if you uh, think about why upon a person who is sleep or a dead person a different world opens why for example a person who is dead uh, whose souls have actually spirits have left so why the other world is open because now his seven organs all activity and all signals which were coming through the seven organs they are closed finish because they dead the mind the brain has become dead so the person thoughts can't disturb so when all these activities all end and the experience for the muslim non muslim sinner bad good whatever everyone sees what happening in the next world what angels are coming what they're doing their angels are punishment why simple reason because he shut off his physical and uh, mental features similarly to the lesser extent what happens in the dream why everyone can almost see dream sometime in once in a lifetime or many times why do people even muslim non muslim why why do they see dream simple reason is because they, again there are seven organs activity of the hands activity of the feet activity of the eyes activity of the hearing that all actually ends and a person is even his brain in the subconscious mind or is working but his conscious brain also shuts off so that person can any person can experience uh, the dream why because he, what here now you are trying to do is whilst being awake to shut off all those things and that's why the you go through the meditation process and once you reach that state has the so you were on that point of you may say transfer uh, to the uh, another uh, 
uh, world as that, but a person falls asleep and then actually they wouldn't actually uh, remember anything as such. So a conscious, uh, staying conscious is the key uh, for you, whilst the other process is fine. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I remember now, um, just before um, the, uh, I fell asleep, I remember seeing um, every, seeing like white, like, um, like a shade of white, and I felt like I was falling. So you saw a shape of white? Not like a, a shade, like shade. Yeah, well, my shade. eyes were closed, but mm. it, it began to become like brighter. Right. Okay, okay, that's fine. So yeah, that is the point, as, as I said, actually when you went to sleep and things start, were starting happening spiritually, but you were not aware. So next time you will see if you try to be a little bit of force yourself, you will inshallah experience that different parts, what the brother was going through. So alhamdulillah, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and give you a more opening. So we have a couple of um, experiences shared on Zoom from the sisters that would like to read, inshallah. Uh, read one of them, inshallah. Okay. So this is a sister from Oldham. After transfer, I saw Hazrat Sahib. They were happy to see me and held my hand. As we were walking through the blessed city of Fez, I was getting younger and younger until I was just a child, about five or six years old. Every time I looked up at them, they would look down on, on me and smile. They took me inside the mazar and we sat down. I was able to follow the Ustad's instructions, but when they said to ask for help and guidance from our Grand Sheikh, I kept switching off and I was somewhere else. I wasn't able to imagine or think of the blessed Grand Sheikh or visualize a light. It was just a darkness. But every time I looked at my teacher, they were still smiling and the light came back. This happened over and over again until it was time to return. Right. See, the, when in the spiritual world or in a dream world, a person sees themselves uh, young, uh, like this sister or daughter have been seeing, growing younger and younger, this is actually reflecting your spiritual age because a person have a mental age, they have physical age, they have psychological age and then they have spiritual. Some people are physically 60 years old but mentally they are 40. Spiritually they might be even not born or one year, two year. So that's reflecting that your development is still in process. You are at a uh, very young age spiritually and in that age a person needs to accompany what happened in the young age. When you're very young, four, five, six years, you mostly stay with your parents. And you don't go for training outside, um, for example, which the adults go, etc., through that training. Because you are young. So that's why you kept seeing your teacher, because you are in that stage that you focus on your teacher, your spiritual mother and father. And that's where your success and your opening lies. You are not meant to, okay, that, that brother was saying, that he was mentioning his vision, so your journey is different. So once a person is connected to the first one, uh, the one's own teach spiritual sp uh, the spirit of the teacher, then all connection uh, are possible to go anywhere, but actually this is one of your destinations main. Uh, and then, so as I was giving an example yesterday, that spirit acts like a hot spot, like a phone hot spot for you, that once you are connected to the, the main, the source phone, the, uh, the hot spot actually is connected and then you can connect to the other thing. Then if you have weaker connection with the main phone, where you are getting hot spot connection, so that will, a person will not be able to serve here and there. So that is what a mistake which people do and human being sometimes by nature they want to go forward, they want to go direct, they want to 
become millionaire overnight, spiritual millionaire overnight, and from all points of view, and they want to. But this hastiness that the Prophet wasalam, said, few, except few matters, al-ujlatu min shaitan hastiness, meaning swiftness, doing things quickly, quick decision making, without proper thought, is, he said he's from shaitan. A person with mostly regret. This is the prophetic wisdom. And he said, Wal anatu min ar Rahman, thoughtfulness is from Allah, and swiftness and uh, haughty or um, hasty or very quick without thinking, basically reacting, not responding, reacting, making decision, um, impulsive. They are from shaitan, meaning actually they don't have any wisdom. And it might be very well that you are just following shaitan, is actually insinuating you, and you are just making decisions. So uh, a person should actually uh, slowly, thoughtfully. So the message for this daughter, sister is to connect with your uh, teacher and spirit and inshallah, uh, being with ones which are spiritually is actually a great thing and or other things just follow automatically. Um, when I was having my experience, I went through the Latifs and um, throughout all of them, I was trying to imagine the name of Allah which was quite easy for me um, in all the colors um, but when I was slowly reaching the middle stage um, throughout like the yellow and the orange I felt like more in the presence of Allah um, and then slowly I was just following the teacher and going throughout the process and it was just feeling like a bit more closer in the presence of Allah um, and then when we took the um, breath and everything, um, I didn't really um, see much. I think it was more imagination, but it was just more uh, getting closer to Allah. Right, mashallah. Right. See, the, the spirit and the root already have connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was in the presence of Allah in the alam e arwa but what has actually overrided and you may say covered, it has been covered by the body and then our actions and every action as the Prophet ﷺ said, whenever a person commits any bad action, a darkness, a darkness appears in the heart. The heart means the inner self, the lataif are all actually part of the heart, you may say. So, the darkness, the whales are there. So what you said that as you reached the middle or whichever you were purifying, you felt more presence of Allah. This is uh, naturally and this is what it is done for so that actually all this darkness is removed so that you will be in the natural state. What is your natural state? By default, everyone is in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By default, everyone is good. You know, to do sin, to do other things is quite opposite. But uh, if a person is left, the spirit is created uh, an obedience, not on rebelliousness. But here, due to the surrounding, due to the body, due to the nafs, uh, a person does something, things which are not. But by default, by nature, uh, alhamdulillah, a person is in the presence and also in uh, obedience as well. So now when you said that you felt more and more closer to Allah or the presence of Allah, that's what's ha happening. And that's why we do purification and dhikr. Uh, because the dhikr takes you in the presence of the one who you are remembering. So you are remembering Allah, the name. The name takes you to the named, the one who is named actually. So it's like uh, you want to be with someone, but there are different whales, a very, very thin whales of net uh, cloth or another cloth. And as they start, you, as you start 
removing the curtains, the more and more a person. So this is just a glimpse, but if a person will try more and also be vigilant, that more energy, dark energy or the sinful activity uh, does not actually enter you, so you will find it more and then inshallah uh, the, the, the spiritual world as well. So your process is going well and it just needs actually more, a uh, little bit more focus. Alhamdulillah, if you will do it once or twice more. So, it will. so this, now you are realizing yourself that what sin or disobedience does to people. They don't get peace. Uh, sin sometimes, be it, actually, it gives you a temporal pleasure like drugs or uh, distraction, but the peace, the inner self does not receive any peace. It is still restlessness there and it is a... So well, let's say a person is watching movie. Is he in peace? Well, he might say, I'm very happy. All what's happening is, it's covering the wound the restlessness, the depression, the sadness or the real state of the person is covered until a person is watching the movie. So he thinks, I am angry. So that's why many people resort to this thing. A person who is committing zina, is he think he's getting peace? No, he's not getting peace. He is just distracted by the pleasure of it or the act of it. And once he done it, done with it, there will be no peace, a person who does any sin, etc., uh, etc. Et so, the inner state, the full well-being, being present with oneself and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the acts of obedience, they bring a total peace, total stillness in the person. It's as though you are living in paradise. You think what will be extra in paradise is the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some of the, uh, the the physical blessings. Otherwise, you get a taste of paradise in this world by actually being in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a peace because yes, paradise is some, another world. This one is another world. But Allah is same. The Allah we will worship in paradise is same. And the God we worship here uh, is same. So that's why one of some of the scholars say that actually uh, um, as the Quran mentions وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً And then the one who fears to stand in front of Allah meaning actually that he will be accountable for him their true paradise is Jannatan. And uh, obviously there will be many many Jannas there before in the Akhirah but they've, the Sufiya have also deduced from it actually that there is the one Jannah is in this dunya and then the Jannah in the Akhirah. In this dunya the Jannah is the Jannah paradise of the being present with Allah, being loved with Allah and being in the full presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then next Jannah, yes on top of the presence and everything a person will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all distraction would be removed. So here lies the, you can, anyone can commit thousand times zina or sexual intimacy or actually drink all the alcohol in the world, take drugs. But the real, when a person has removed the, these wheels and the, he is in the, or she is in the presence of Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala be it in the salah, be it otherwise, it's like peace, it becomes the center, hub of peace is flowing. There's so much so that actually people who are sitting by those people in their company, they start to feel temporarily, they also don't feel any other actually upsetness and other things. Because this is, because Allah is, as He has said, is salam. Salam means uh, the peace and the source of peace and the peace giver. Uh, that's it. 
Uh, my name is uh, Walid and I'm from London. Um, my experience started um, at the beginning um, as you were doing Zikr. So I was following your voice, doing the Zikr as much as I could uh, remember what I know. Uh, I've had my eyes closed, head down. And about a minute before your Zikr had finished, um, I had the sensation of not being here. Um, just very lightheaded, floating around. And I had a sudden stop where I imagine you're in a car, you someone does an emergency brake, and you, you literally are full of emotion, and you tell them to stop. And in, in front of me was a drink uh, in a white plastic cup, orange color, fizzy. And I'm looking at the drink. The drink then gets placed on a step. When I uh, I'm looking at the step, as I'm trying to go further, I couldn't. So I took a step back, and as I look up, it was the, the, the marble slate area that you were sitting on with the brothers earlier outside Abdul Aziz the Bug's um, grave. I'm there for possibly a, a short while. I'm thinking, you know, what am I doing? Uh, why can't I? St I can't step over the step, and I'm questioning, should I pick up the drink and should I drink it? If I didn't, I left it there. And I have this sensation of the white Allah on top of me the white light and I'm still standing there trying to question what to do but I still could not get past the step but I couldn't get away from it either I couldn't think about anything else um, then in the background I remember the other brother who started the Latais, Um he started talking about them and within maybe 10-15 seconds of him starting talking um, I sort of snapped out of it then I started doing the Latais, but the more I tried, the zero connection I was getting, as if, I think the best way to describe it is the Wi-Fi was gone. I had no connection. I, I tried the, the naval one, I tried the other one, closed my eyes, really tried to focus, but I couldn't get anything. I just felt like, I'm still sat here, I can't imagine anything, I can't feel. What I had felt previously, it wasn't even coming close to that. So for the rest of the session, unfortunately, I just sat there and looked at everyone else's faces. Right, mashallah. Right. <clears throat> what has happened is that, uh, you see, uh, when the person sitting here, he is giving you a guided tour, uh, and that is given because actually many of the people, everyone is at different level, as I said, that no one is, should compare oneself to other, because everyone is different, everyone's destiny is different, everyone's makeup is different. And everyone's share is different. There is plenty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's treasures are plenty. There's plenty for everyone. No one is taking someone else. Let's say if you don't take your share, no one will take your share. That's there actually. If he doesn't. So everything is there. So there's no need for negative competition or jealousy in Islam. Why Islam forbids you? Because he that when everyone has this share, for example, you have ten apples, you have ten apples, you have ten apples. So everyone is going to get their own, and if I do not get my share, for example, I'm the destined, no one else will get my share as well. It's only I can attain what's destined for me. So there's no use of leg pulling and thinking bad or trying to actually uh, more negative. So this is a useless activity which brings destruction. So regarding your uh, experience is different in the sense that you without guidance, without being guided, and a guided tour, your spirit transferred automatically without even the lataif and things. So it's, as I said, this is for beginners we do the purification of the lataif and thing. When a person becomes accustomed to it, when they become after practice, like, then you don't need these things at all. Uh, for example, you are in presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without even walking, talking, in salah. You, don't, you are in both worlds uh, at the same time without actually effort. But yes, the beginning person, they have to do effort and things, etc., etc. So what was happening is that your spirit is actually has already been transferred and 
you were having experience, you were having a, a drink is the spiritual power, the more power. It's as though you are connected to Sayyidina Abdul Aziz, the Bar Rahmullah. That's why it's a very, very quick because it was, the spirit was waiting that when I do it, I get this connection. So, you coming back to the person who was guiding, that disturbed your experience because that was a real experience happening and now you come following someone and that takes more expertise and it's an unnatural in a way because you are following someone. So that was, so Alhamdulillah, but there's nothing to worry, but rather be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have found, your spirit has found, as they say, people do not know if one person is a soul mate or not, actually, uh, they are actually in the world of spirits who was with them, but yes, the spirits who benefited from anyone spiritually, they also become very quickly acquainted with those. So that shows your compatibility of your spirit. Uh, that's as though it was a missing part from Surah Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bagh and his uh, teaching. So you can have your own experience is, is, in, in a way, you may say. You don't need as such as to follow. So next time when follow, uh, it happens, even though you are sitting with the company, you just follow your own experience and let the other person say whatever he is saying for other people who is, he is taking on the tour. So Alhamdulillah, it would have been more profound in the sense if you would have just let it flow. But next time, inshallah, alone if you will do, or actually, inshallah, this is. So mashallah, uh, this is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may read from the... Uh, the online experiences as well. You said there were two. Bismillah <laughs> rahman rahim So this is a, a sister from Bolton. Um, as we transferred, I traveled to Fez with Hazar Saab. We sat at the Mazar and prayed and made dua. I'm sure I dozed off, but I still felt aware of going. What, what was going on? I prayed la hawla wa la quwwata a few times as though my thoughts were straying. As I concentrated, the light, the mazar, li uh, the, maz the light on the mazar, opened up to reveal our grand sheikh. They made salam and asked us if we would like to go with them. I said yes. We entered into the grave and travelled through there. We immediately went to Medina where we all made salam and again instantly carried on traveling and we were immediately at a huge door as we got there it opened and we entered instinctively i knew we were visiting our beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ground we walked on was like a carpet of sparkling diamonds i looked around it was unlike a room it was like a palace garden. Our path took us straight to our Prophet ﷺ and they greeted us. They were pleased to see all of us and were happy and conversing. As we were leaving, they stopped us and said to me, myself and Hazrat Sheikh Ahmed Abbaq, uh, is on the, uh, sorry, she's quoting us. Uh, um, she, she, he said to me, Sheikh Ahmed Dabbag is on the correct way. Hold on to them firmly and you won't stray. And then she's explaining, I can't forget this feeling. It was like when a parent advises us in a beautiful, firm manner. Hazrat Saab was still with us, so I smiled at them. And, uh, and ask for permission and return. Wa alaikum as salam. MashaAllah, those people who have seen the Prophet Islam in his physical life or who have dealt with him, they all fell in love with him, his physical being, his behavior, his uh, speaking, his advising. Like this sister has mentioned, that she, when the Prophet Islam gave advice, she still have this feeling. It's a, a strange, beautiful feeling that someone like parent, parent meaning that one who is very compassionate, a mother who is very loving, someone say. So Rasulullah was unique and 
we don't know him really we only know 1% his even his looks and his silence was so beautiful his everything each of his hair each of his speech uh, those people who have described and so they so everyone fell in love with him muslim non muslims even he stayed with sayyida halima her family he stayed with actually sayyida amina radhiyallahu anha she was obviously his blessed uh, mother or he stayed with his uncle or wherever so he had such unique features such high character that we can never comprehend it through books and things or seeing because there's none like him as such only little bit of uh, people follow so much so that even animals fell in love with him the trees fell in love with him the stones fell in love with him the earth the jinnat the angels you see angels are beings of light but they fell in love with the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam they loved him even janna loves him the stars the moon and everything so what the sister or daughter is saying that is just a glimpse you have in the spiritual world of listening the advice uh, the, of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that's why people wish to be with him see him and they will be with him those who love him in akhira and in dunya as well though spiritually person can be connected and the other journey she is mentioned from fast to sayyid abdul aziz the bag to madina to al munawwara blessed journey as i said when you have the connection then actually the a person can travel and what the prophet al islam advised you that be with Uh, him and actually they will guide you obviously all this guidance is conditional conditional until a person is teaching the right way until a person is uh, portraying the true teaching of islam and the sunna a person then needs to follow maybe i am doing little bit of that making some mistakes but uh, one should not take that actually as an absolute statement these are all conditional only absolute obedience unconditional obedience uh, is to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is masum all other people we can be on right path and one day go astray on the other but his teachings are shining like the sun actually which everyone can see what they are what his sunna is what his prophetic conduct is but actually it's a blessing to hear uh, and actually know that what the path we are following of sayyidina abdul aziz the bag which is called tariqa e muhammadiyah it is the muhammadan path so it is so in this uh, gathering as you are seeing the many people do like um, speeches or Uh, seminars on awliya allah and their lives here it is a unique that yes you will be through the two days now you will hear as well uh, after my this session the meeting of sayyidina abdul aziz the bagh with sayyidina khidr with allah and who a session so people only hear but in this these two days you have this opportunity if you want to connect to them spiritually so that you have an emotional attachment with the pious and righteous once you have emotional attachment you want to follow you want to have you have an emotional attachment with the football star with an actor with a car with whatever you just need to actually you just want to follow it you just want that actually because you have that emotional attachment here that's why we are asked to love good things because our emotions are attached to it love brings focus and then a person will inshallah in their daily lives they will actually follow uh, in, their, in their teachings as well so the imam hafiz ishan he read the part of the quran which mentions the full the story of sayyidina khidr and sayyidina musa alaihi salam meeting and the three famous incidents took uh, place between them and thing and now inshallah after i uh, if we i finish this feedback there will be a uh, other teacher who will be enlightening you on when the meeting of sayyidina abdul aziz the bagh how he met sayyidina khidr radhiyallahu anhu 
uh, first time so that now you having a spiritual connection there you will see his connection and inshallah it's no use if I teach you oh, how to become millionaire millionaire but actually not really giving you you, are, you still got the same money actually in your pocket and in your bank and you lecture after lecture after one year two year three year you are struggling to pay bills but standing seminars and lectures how to be millionaire that doesn't benefit the best uh, actually seminar would be that I teach you and also teach you how to invest hundred pound one hundred pound thousand pound so that you, at least you are making some money so those people who are attending and who are convening lectures and conferences after conference lecture after lecture spiritually they are still poor actually meaning they don't have anything only information information it's like a person who teaches to be a millionaire and after 10 years the person is still the same actually so, so this is like this as well that you are not only given information information can be found in uh, books on internet you are also given some part of the spiritual wealth as well connection so that you it is a real thing so you know that you can start your own spiritual venture or a, or a spiritual business and then progress up to you who you want we all are also in the same boat meaning seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one is a prophet or anything one um, etc here or anywhere prophet Islam was the last prophet and messenger so now all of us are in danger all of us uh, have our dark sides and our good sides and uh, but still we are asked to help uh, each other and this brings a blessing to the one who invites and the one others as well Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was a mixture feeling. Uh, I've started uh, doing the zikr, which I really, really enjoyed it. I was really loving it. Um, and then we got on to those uh, the tifas. I could uh, imagine all these colors, but uh, and I was going through it, which was really, I was enjoying it. I could imagine the Allah in different colors. But I was paying attention, uh, even though I couldn't see the, uh, the Allah's name on different colors, but I could, my, my mind was focused, um, and I was really, really enjoying it, and then, when we finished, uh, when I've uh, transferred my, uh, uh, the, the, uh, you can say, when I uh, transferred uh, my room into the, the the feature I had in front of me, uh, mini me, I can say, uh, and then I could see myself uh, getting up to you and. Uh, uh, saying salam uh, and then you, you looked at me and you've greeted me and you've held my hand uh, and you took me on a journey uh, and then we were at uh, the, 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 the sub grave uh, but then when I was there I could, it, it was just like I was switching off and come back on again. I could see the light. I was there, right next to you. Uh, but then I was just. It's like I could see the light. I was reciting. I was. I was right next to you. But then, I was just switching off. I don't know what was happening there. Uh, but then I was coming back on to it. And then after a few minutes, it was just like darkness. And I was just thinking, okay, what do I do here? But then I was coming back to you again, like I was looking for you, saying, where are you, where are you? And then 
just say after a few minutes, of, uh, like I found you again, and then I was in peace, and then I was same experience again. I was on the on there, but after that, it's just like I disconnected. Uh, right, mashallah. Is it your uh, first time you did this kind of thing? It is my first time in my life. Right, okay. So, mashallah, uh, you may say that for the first time you have heard about Latai for this process or even met. Uh, but obviously, spiritually, your spirit was already known to us or Sayyidina Abdul Izdabar. So, that is why it connected very quickly. Uh, and the process and uh, uh, you went and you also did uh, although we teach but you did the right thing that when a person is lost somewhere in the spiritual world their uh, emergency um, assistance or help come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the spiritual world from the spirit of their teacher if they imagine they think that actually helps them in a way so you all the way you All reached, way. mashallah, Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabar, Rahmullah, Mazar Sharif, and there in the light. So, because this is your very, very first experience, so it is, uh, this happens gradually, things happen gradually. So, for you, Alhamdulillah, it happened very fast in a way. But as I said, some of the spirits, they are already acquainted, they are already uh, compatible with and they can alhamdulillah connect uh, it's like you meet sometimes uh, some people and you connect with them very quickly it's as though you know them from uh, and sometimes other people who might be your even uh, physical uh, siblings or even your children you might not be able to connect so that is to do with the uh, the spirits and the arwa as well sometimes so, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and further, inshallah, you uh, will progress to meet and greet these great personalities and even then going further to Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once one has this kind of connection and love, emotion, attachment, alhamdulillah, it's your software, your software, spiritual software changes. It becomes upgraded and a person can then actually, alhamdulillah, live a life of how the divine, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to. And um, that is success because all of us, we are soon going to leave uh, willingly or unwillingly this world. And everything we are going to leave and everything is going to leave us. Not only we leave, but everything leaves except. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet, Prophet al Islam, and the pious and the righteous people, and the connection which we have for the sake of Allah, that's not going to uh, leave us. So, Alhamdulillah. Okay, inshallah, you should learn more and about the path of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabar, the path of Tariqah Muhammadiyah, so that you may actually benefit to the uh, full, uh, Alhamdulillah, and the maximum level. Jazakumullah, Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum. My name is Waalaikumsalam. Uh, I'm from Bolton. And the houses are. I started off with protection of malls. Alhamdulillah. And then I uh, imagined Allah Subhanahu Wa name above and the light coming inside my body. I could see the light. It was going in every part of my body. And then Alhamdulillah, we started off on the red lataif and when I was doing the red lataif, I could see that I seen like in the lataif, I seen this glass bottle and in that glass bottle, I could see it very, very clearly like watching a film on TV, that blood was coming out of the bottle. So I was, as I was doing the lataif cleansing process, then the blood changed to like milk. So then it came, or it was, become like from red to white, white like milk was coming out and then I carried on and then it was like water's coming out 
And then f I moved to the orange one, alhamdulillah, and then same pro uh, carried on. And then, and then when it was time to do the uh, golden breath, I was trying to imagine myself, but I could only see uh, the teacher. Only could, I could only see yourself. So then I tried to imagine my spiritual body again, but I could only see yourself. So then I, when I did the golden breath, it was like my, my, my room, my soul went inside your uh, physical body. And then yourself took me. We went together to uh, the Mazar of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bagh And when we, when we arrived there, they were very, very pleased. And I could see that there was light everywhere. There was noor everywhere. And they were very pleased to meet, meet us. And they said to me, that Usman, my son, you've, uh, you've not visited me for some time. And then they were very pleased to see yourself. And when we were sat, uh, towards the blessed, uh, uh, blessed face Mubarak, and then what happened was the the grave, the blessed gra grave opened, and so much nur came from it that they invited us inside. When we went inside, there was a when we went inside there was a, like a garden of we were sat in the garden of paradise, and Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bar the lady said to me, Usman. Uh, we want you to quick like do your tazkiyah like why are you taking time we want you to also know about the secrets like uh, they said they said we know like doing tazkiyah it's like you go through pain like enough it doesn't like to do certain things but you have to do it they said these pains they they like each pain has a secret to it but that time will come so he said, you have to, inshallah, keep trying. Do it. it should be easy now. Come on, get it out of the way. Stop wasting time here. Uh, you know, and then they took us to the blessed um, Johnny Mubarak of the Prophet Wasallam. And when we arrived there, Rasul Pak Wasallam, the Johnny Mubarak opened, and lo so much nur came out. We all, we also say they not. Abu Bakr Sadiq Sayyidina Umar was present as well. And then when when I went inside with the blessed teacher and Sayyidina Abdul Aziz then it changed again. And we went so high. I'm not sure where this place was, but it looked very heavenly. It looked so beautiful. And I seen the blessed um, like we were sat in a semicircle. And I seen the blessed uh, Dari Mubarak of the Prophet. And this is the first time I've ever seen any of that maybe featured. And, the, and the, the blessed beard looked so shiny that it looked like it was wet, but it wasn't wet, but it was just very beautiful and shiny. And Rasul Pak Sassam asked me to recite Naat, to recite a Nasheed in that blessed gathering. So I, I recited uh, Ya Nabi Salaam Alaikum. And Prophet Rasul Pak Sassam was really happy. And then we stayed for some time. And then after this, um, I we came back and said, "Then of the Latif Dubartani, give me further guidance." And they just uh, mentioned to me that, and Rasul Pak Sassam also mentioned to me that to reach my closeness, people do like many things, but you just have to follow Hazrat Sab and. Just follow their way, follow follow them, and this will be the quickest way to reach me. And follow their teachings, follow Tariqa Muhammadiyah, and follow it properly, follow my sunnahs. And if you follow these, then you will have the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will have immense closeness to myself. And then Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bartali also give me guidance and uh, what to do and how to progress on the path of Tariqa Muhammadiyah. And then um, Myself and the teacher, we uh, uh, took ijazat and we came back and it ended. Yeah. Okay, mashallah. Uh, you have all the answers there, so I don't need to say anything really more than more than what is needed really. Uh, the answers and the guidance which Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the The beginning part of the red latifa is showing that actually if it is. Uh, purified, this is to do with shahawat and actually all the, these desires. 
that actually they can be fulfilled in a lawful manner. So the rest of advice I think is for not for yourself only but for others as well. And again I would say that what you said, what the other sister said that when the Prophet Islam spoke his way of Nasiha, his way of giving advice was such unique that people become captivated by it and you have seen one few uh, blessed hairs of the beard of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you were surprised that it seemed that they are wet but they are not but they are shining and things. And imagine the beauty of the Prophet Islam and even his physical beauty was hidden to some extent even when he was living in this life actually. So his real uh, beauty uh, very few people know anyway even with those who have seen him. So Alhamdulillah all the guidance and uh, the nasiha uh, how to progress uh, is for you and as they said that it is little bit painful um, the purification because you are going against your uh, inclinations but it is not so much painful or hard working as you go through uh, training for boxing and other things uh, not anywhere near that at all plus if, if even in this field he or receives a let's say world champion uh, belt still it's going to go away and after some time it doesn't mean anything but here with a little bit of effort you become a champion of your own kingdom own world forever and ever uh, where it doesn't actually perish the the, the kingdom of heaven uh, so yeah so there is much more at stake but very less effort uh, to be done for what one can receive inshallah Uh, just one or two people more who really want to say or ask and then because the next session comes and then they have to rest as well. Uh, inshallah. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hassan, my name is Abbas. I'm from Bolton. Yes, mashallah. When I started um, the, the ascension, initially I started with um, trying to be in a state of humility and right. shukr and uh, reliance but then um, I started to experience some sensations and my eyes started to flick and my body started to get lighter. A uh, little bit loudly if you can speak. <laughs> so when I was trying to be um, in the state of humbleness and reliance and shukr um, at this point I started to experience some sensations and my eyes started to flicker um, but because of this, eventually I started um, the, the Latifas. But because of these states, um, they kept coming in my mind. Thoughts kept coming in my mind regarding um, what will happen when I sit in the question and answer session and give feedback to us. Um, so they kept distracting me throughout the Latifas. Um, I don't know what the, the feelings were, whether it was the arrogance or just... Um, self-likeness or something, but these thoughts kept distracting me. So throughout the red latif, I felt that it was not clean. And then the orange, it wasn't as clean as well. And then it started to get better for the yellow. And then as the latif has progressed, these thoughts started to fade away, but they were there initially quite strong. And I had to kind of almost fight them at times. Eventually the, the, the transfer took place and should I carry on? Yes, please. Oh. Eventually, the transfer took place, and I imagined the teacher. I felt that as I um, started guiding, I, when they mentioned to hold the blessed teacher's hand firmly, I imagined I was trying to follow step by step, and eventually we came to the blessed Mazar of Hazrat Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Taba, and at one point I felt that the teacher may have mentioned or I could feel that they invited me to eat, but at that point I started to doubt because I would, was thinking that we are going to the Mazar Sharif, maybe this is my own input. And then eventually I was trying to think of the Mazar Sharif and going inside. But again, I was feeling that I should sit with 
the blessed teacher and eat and eventually I felt that I maybe took a morsel of food and then eventually I went inside and tried to imagine my imagine, imagine the, the teacher and at one point when we were reciting the Durood Sharif I felt like I could see a um, green light but again I started to doubt because I thought maybe it is that I'm not transferred and this is actually the green Latifa and it's and I maybe have not transferred. Right, mashallah. You see the main uh, thing is that you have been connected and all other things obviously come in the way like you're saying that what you will say uh, these questions were coming. I mean it's very easy to answer this question meaning if it comes to you that you will give whatever is seen. You don't have to make up or anything or whatever. It's just actually whatever a person goes through they just mention. If not, if not it doesn't matter at all. And uh, plus actually it shows the connection and your uh, transfer everything Alhamdulillah is fine. Uh, it just needs because a person who does it more regularly uh, they become you, you want to be in this state in all time really you know connection it's not once you have and then you go home and then you get a state and you say oh I find it hard or to do muraqaba and things because it's not about muraqaba it is about Allah and being attaining that state and then all the time in the streets here there you're almost there in prayer everywhere. You don't have to do much effort uh, as well. So here it is showing like the brothers how they are mentioning and the sister that they are taken very high up by the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now meeting the Prophet Islam, Sayyidina Abdul Izdaba, Rahmullah, spiritual world is higher world. Now we should not behave like shaitan that Allah subhanahu wa took him and then he came then he down came back actually down back. by actually doing something silly and something sinful himself. So it is as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us. Now we should try to stay there in the heavenly world. Once we go outside our house, home, and other activities, we should not fall down. Keeping up the character, all we are asked to do is that to do good and positive things and not to do evil and not to think negatively because it's harmful anyway. We are not really asked to do much. If someone is asked to eat healthy food, what is the big deal? This is what a person is asking to eat healthy food. Don't eat harmful, poisonous food. So similarly these uh, actions are also food for the spirit. So healthy actions benefit you, benefit others, others and their things. So don't uh, actually make something burden for you but think this is a blessing uh, it's obviously healthy diet obviously need some little bit of sacrifice you have to give up junk food similarly you have, uh, have to give up junk amal junk deeds which are uh, not beneficial so inshallah after all a uh, person will benefit so you, you have this built in you mashallah in your software you see a very powerful thing uh, the spirit is and uh, alhamdulillah you can attain uh, success salvation uh, uh, in this life and hereafter as well by the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the path of the Prophet which is the path of goodness path of benefit path of light path of giving path of forgiving and uh, path of goodness only the evil does not exist uh, there actually as the Prophet is infallible and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him perfect and we also follow to some extent with good intention uh, to the best of our ability or at least we try and alhamdulillah we are uh, successful as the words you are seeing them not much effort we have done or you have done from yesterday we just sitting eating and praying and doing a little bit muraqaba and things that other people even non-muslim who want to have spiritual experience or meditation they are paying thousands and thousands pound and traveling and sitting in jungle and doing all these things that even many muslims who are trying to have an experience with uh, through this actually they are having difficulty they are not they have spent one year sometime in the path of allah 
praying and doing dhikr and other things and nowhere near they reach here why why we have this opportunity and privilege firstly with the fadl of allah and secondly say inna abdul aziz daba was such a unique person his uh, his hub and spiritual power is such that actually as i said he is after this sahaba is one was mine tabeen he is like khidr of this umma actually like uh, say in imam mahdi uh, radhiyallahu anhu will come in the last days he will be say in khidr spiritual in the terms uh, actually from his uh, age uh, because he was in the second millennium so alhamdulillah as and as i said the status of any person spiritually is known by if anyone follows them loves them how quickly they progress like any trainer you can how do you assess any trainer that how do they become if they become quickly successful that is the so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the best of the creation so those people who sat and loved him they became companions and they reached the height similarly only uh, awliya allah and sayyidina abdul aziz dubar rahimahullah although three centuries ago Uh, but actually his fayuzat to his teaching that others are such that others are amazed but uh, rather startled rather up to the extent of denial that this how can this happen person themselves cannot believe so this is the fadl of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla wa ala so inshallah and now inshallah we'll uh, conclude this Uh, feedback session and any uh, still who wants to mention anything disturbing they can also connect with the teachers or the next feedback session and now there'll be just before you sleep a uh, short session the story of sayyidina abdul aziz dubag meeting sayyidina khidr so that spiritually in your dream as well before you are just lying down and try to go to the purification of lataif and connect to the other world so that you even while you are sleep things are happening work is going on like the body repairs itself during the sleep body repairs itself during the sleep the mind refreshes itself during sleep similarly you can you make your spirit work while you are actually sleeping and don't forget to sleep with an angel as i mentioned that once you are in wudu Uh, and uh, before you do wudu and you are with an angel and inshallah jazakumullah khairan jaza i know there are mashallah 100 sisters completely exactly 100 sisters participating who are registered maybe there are more as well who are not registered who are participating and who wants to mention and inshallah we'll have a session with them as well tomorrow morning hopefully giving them more opportunity and uh, the brothers as well obviously and yourselves as well so whole world need to know this they are in search of peace the proper way the method and uh, away from all distraction so that they can live peacefully let others live peacefully and give the beautiful message uh, of the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam mashallah jazakumullah khairan jazakumullah subhanakallahu wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik Waiting for something